but they're getting preferential treatment because because what what the what the cops are being used as now um, are tools for the establishment. They are used as tools for the corporate corporations, right? Uh, most of what they've been protecting are not people. We see a lot of incidences, uh, like over the last probably like 10 years, we've seen a ton of incidences of more uh, cops shooting civilians, uh, whether it's black, Latino, white, Native American, immigrant, whatever. Uh, there's a lot of aggression towards the populace in general. And, uh, and that makes us trust the cops less because we don't want that. We don't want somebody just aggressing towards us, right? Like that's that. That's crazy. Why? What? That would be like. Like, why would you want to hang around with somebody that's constantly just like, "Are you fucking looking at me?" And, and like pulls out a gun. Like that's not. You don't want to be friends with that dude. You don't want to be hang out with that person. It's ridiculous. So what are the what are the arguments that's used against uh, uh you know the the sort of anti cop rhetoric or any sort of police reform or police brutality reform is uh well it's a hard job. It's a hard job, Chris, being a cop. No one's fucking denied. No one came out and been like, oh, it's a piece of cake being a cop. Everybody could do it. Everybody can just be cops anytime they want. Citizens arrest. That's a thing. If citizens can arrest people and be cops, then anybody can be a cop. It's not a, It's not the presidency, okay? It's what people say about going to be pre- Oh, anybody can be president. There's very clear rules to being president. <laughs> Uh, and there's very clear rules to be a cop too, right? You have to go through a lot of, uh, you have to go through some of the training programs and stuff that we're talking about. But again, that training should in, in, uh, involve de-escalation, psychological training, uh, it, it, maybe not just target practice all the time, <laughs> uh, maybe not make people afraid of uh, people of color and black people. Uh, so, which um, anyway, uh, but it's a hard job. I've heard that. Ex- I've heard that being used against the notion of. Um, police reform that it's a hard job it's a tough job there's a lot of tough jobs out there you know that people don't people don't react to this kind of violence they they use tactics of de-escalation in their job nurses nurses have a tough job uh nurses and doctors both have tough jobs right and they see a bevy of patients i dated a nurse and uh i there's there's so many stories of uh of people throwing poop around just poop feces like people like violently attacking other people uh that happened to our friend at a fucking library (laughs) and he's and he's a security guy at his library that's a tough job that guy had to deal with some poop but he wasn't just he didn't turn into like some crazy poop vigilante (laughs) going around being like i gotta find this fecal freddy guy fucking take that guy down (laughs) Like, he didn't run around. He was just like, all right, we found who it was. Maybe we go talk to him and tell him, hey, don't poop in the library. Right? It's that, And that's what nurses do, right? Nur- nurses aren't like, hey, this guy's throwing poop around. Uh, somebody flood this guy's system with some morphine. Huh? Put this guy down like a horse. No, they take care of them. They have a Hippocratic coat. They have to take... They are protecting and serving the citizens in their own way. They could get into a whole discussion about the healthcare system, but that's not... That's that's a separate matter, right? But, like, that's a tough job. They work 12 to 16-hour shifts. That's great. That's so difficult. And they have to deal with a variety of different patients. They have to remember all these inf- this information. That's a tough job. No, no nurse has just come out and been like, you know what? I'm real tired of black people today. I'm going to put morphine in all the black people. Like, the nurses haven't come out and done that. If there is... Then go, you, you tell me, uh, and I will, uh, I will re- retract my statement. Do you want to tell them about this? Not yet. Oh, it's fine. Not yet. It's nice. I want to talk about it later. Okay, I understand. All right. More signatures, people. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's, it's a hard... Teachers... Teachers have a hard job too, right? But wh- whenever some fucking three-year-old starts throwing a temper tantrum, they're not like, well, it's time to use a lot of paper mache and make you the art installation, Billy. They're not doing good shit like that, right? Like the hard job argument is just like, yeah, man, everybody has challenges in their job. Everybody does. But that those challenges don't mean that you get to pull out a gun and shoot people. We've, we had this conversation... Uh, with somebody recently, uh, I can't remember who it was. Maybe my wife will remember who it was. Um, 
but somebody was like, we should take the guns away from the police officers. Uh, that was me. Was that you? Did you make that statement? Me. Okay, my wife, my wife said that. My wife made that statement. She said that we should take the guns away. And, and I, I think that's a great idea. Um, I, I mean, it, it'll make their job difficult, but perhaps, once again, if we have it between community policing, city policing, state policing, right? Uh, uh, the, the incremental escalation of, uh, of certain crimes, uh, of what kind of policing needs to be administered for every situation. Uh, why does somebody need a gun uh, for a noise complaint? Why does somebody need a gun for, you know, uh, a small dispute between, between people? Um, the, you need a gun when you think that somebody has a weapon. Uh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Armed robberies. Okay. Yeah. Those cops need guns, but on, on daily patrol type stuff, um, community policing level stuff, you don't, you don't need a gun. Why do you need a gun? If you're going to stop Eric Garner on the streets and be like, Eric, are you fucking selling cigarettes in front of my bro? Come on, dog. You don't need a gun for that. And Pantaleo really didn't have a gun. Or the stove. Um, or, or, yeah, or if you're coming to fix somebody's stove, you don't need a, you don't need a fucking gun. You don't need to come in there and be like, back up! <laughs> the stuff's in danger. The British or the Australians. The British don't have guns. The Australians don't have guns either. They got those yeah. sticks. They got batons. Yeah. Yeah, the nightsticks. The billy clubs. Billy clubs. Yeah, dude, Daredevil didn't have guns. That's a ground-level hero right there. Okay, the dare. Okay, Daredevil did know uh, like ninja kung fu, uh, and did have some Kevlar type tech, right? It's like don't you don't need to be a cop and Frank Castle the Punisher at the same time. You could be a cop and Daredevil, and you're and you're fine, right? Like again, it's community policing. If you're doing community policing and you're taking care of your neighborhood, and things aren't escalating to like some crazy level then you don't need a gun. You don't need to call these a bunch of these cops and block off streets and stuff. That's just not what you need. Uh, that's, but, but that is one of those things is like, that's why they claim they need a gun because their job's so hard and things could go haywire at, at any point in time. When in reality, like things don't pop off until the cops show up, right? Like, like what happened to Ferguson? What, what happened in, um, in uh, for, uh, North Dakota and, and stuff like that. It's like, things escalated when the cops showed up in tactical gear. Like, they don't even look human in those gears, right? And then they were, like, using, uh, especially in, in North Dakota d with, with DAPL, uh, what was happening with there is, like, they were using some high-tech shit, right? It was, like, they were using, like, water cannons and sound cannons. That's Star Wars-level shit, isn't it? That's, like, that's, like, uh... That's like stormtrooper technology, which is upsetting. It's upsetting that we have stormtrooper technology, and it's upsetting that it seems like Star Wars is going to start in North Dakota. All those things are very upsetting, I think. Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and share it. Uh, these are little clips from a little segment I do called Road Reflections, where uh, I go live on my Facebook page uh, and talk about current events, creativity, uh, touring, what's going on uh, in my life. So if you enjoyed this kind of content, you can go and like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Krish Mohan. Ha ha. Uh, I'm also performing live stand up comedy all around the country if you enjoyed these uh, little snippets of sociopolitical commentary uh, it's very similar to what my stand-up comedy is you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com for all of the show dates and tickets it's r-a-m-a-n noodlescomedy.com uh, and if you want to continue supporting diy independent socially conscious comedy content you can become a patron today I don't have uh, any corporate sponsors or any small business sponsors just yet. So at the moment, I am people-sponsored. I'm sponsored by you guys. So you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha and become a patron today starting at only $2 a month. You can check out all the tiers and rewards. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you soon.